President Biden has given himself a tight deadline to nominate the next Supreme Court justice as Stephen Breyer prepares to retire. The president vowed to nominate the first black woman to the high court by the end of February, but it's unclear if she'll have any bipartisan support. So Bradley Blackburn joins us now with more on this. Bradley, good morning. Hey, Anne Marie, good morning. Certainly don't anticipate any broad bipartisan support. Things are so different now than they were 30 years ago when Justice Breyer was confirmed by the Senate. Back then, 87 senators voted yes on his nomination. Today, the nominee would be lucky to peel off two or three Republican votes. But at the end of the day, it may not matter because in a 50 50 Senate, Democrats should have the votes they need to approve President Biden's first choice for the Supreme Court. I will select a nominee worthy of Justice Breyer's legacy of excellence and decency. President Biden says he will choose a Supreme Court nominee to replace Justice Stephen Breyer by the end of February. The person I will nominate will be someone with extraordinary qualifications, character, experience, and integrity. And that person will be the first black woman ever nominated to the United States Supreme Court. At the White House yesterday, Justice Breyer spoke about the American experiment. My grandchildren and their children, they'll determine whether the experiment still works. And of course, I am an optimist and I'm pretty sure it will. The front runner to replace Justice Breyer is federal appeals court judge Katanji Brown Jackson, who once clerked for Breyer and spoke about the experience in 2017. It was an incredible experience just to be in the room while the justice grappled with some of the most difficult and consequential legal issues of the day. Another candidate is Judge J. Michelle Childs, a favorite of South Carolina Congressman James Clyburn. She has uh, what I call uh, the kind of background and experiences that we ought to have. It's unclear if Republicans will support any nominee, though they are powerless to block the confirmation if all 50 Democrats vote yes. I'm going to give the president's nominee, whoever that may be, a fair look. Breyer says he'll stay on the bench until the end of the court's current term this summer. And if the next Supreme Court justice is, in fact, a black woman, she will join Justices Sonia Sotomayor and Elena Kagan in the court's liberal wing, meaning that all of the liberal justices are women. Anne Marie. Very interesting, Bradley. So uh, the president's given himself a month to come up with a name, come up with a nominee. Once that happens, walk us through the process. What's the timeline? How long will it take uh, before Congress gets an opportunity to consider and vet her? Right. The wheels should start moving very quickly. Senate Democrats say they will start this confirmation process as soon as President Biden makes his announcement on a nomination. Of course, the Senate Judiciary Committee is responsible for vetting the nominee. And once they approve after confirmation hearings, it would go to the full Senate for a vote. Now, this process has typically taken about 70 days in the past, but there's no firm rule on that, so it could move faster. And Anne-Marie, importantly, it can all happen before Justice Breyer steps down formally. Yes, because he remains a Supreme Court justice until the end of this term. Um, give us a sense of, you know, some of the more consequential cases that he and the other justices will be considering this term. Right. The court has heard a lot of very high profile cases this term, and Justice Breyer will have a lot of influence over the final decisions on those until he steps down. And that may be one reason why he decided to hold on for another year. He will have influence over cases uh, involving gun rights, abortion rights, among other social issues. The court also plans to hear major cases on affirmative action, but that may not happen until next October, Anne Marie, when a new justice could be on the bench. All right, Bradley, thank you very much.